Hopefully this message here tonight will be a help and encouragement to you, and I trust that it will be. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Psalm chapter 119, Psalm 119, and we're going to be looking at a verse uh, uh, kind of toward the, uh, not quite toward the middle, probably the last third uh, of the uh, chapter here, it's one verse, verse number 125. Psalm 119, verse 125. Let's stand to show respect to the reading of God's word. If you cannot, I understand you may remain seated, but if we could stand and show respect to the reading. Psalm 119, verse 125. By the way, gentlemen, if you're here tonight, you uh, would like to take off your jacket, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, your pastor is very warm, and it's very rare, you know, uh, that it's very rare that I take my jacket off when I am boiling hot. And I don't know if it's because of the... Uh, uh, if it is down there, I, I can't really feel it because I don't get any air up here. You know, you all sitting right here, you get the air conditioning and the fans and all that. And I get nothing. Amen? <laughs> but Abby I don't even get that. No, you can feel it right here. There's nothing. Abby needs a cover. Abby needs a cover. She needs a blanket. <laughs> She's freezing cold. You know, all 90 degrees. And if it's 95, then she'd at least take the blanket off. Amen? That's, uh, anyway. We'll, uh, we'll try to, I'll try to keep your attention, though, as I said tonight. Let's uh, read together uh, with me, if you will, uh, Psalm 119, verse 125. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. I'm going to focus on three, or four, I'm sorry, the first four words in that, uh, uh, that particular verse, and that's what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, tonight, we're looking at uh, the title of the message is, A Servant's Heart, A Servant's Heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful and uh, appreciative of all you've done for us, Lord. We uh, thank you even for uh, whether you gave to us today. Lord, we uh, are thankful and grateful for uh, what bit of air conditioning, Lord, or what fan, you know, what, that we do have, Lord. I know... There are people on the other side of the globe here that, uh, Lord, they would uh, sit in uh, 100, 110 degree weather just to hear your word preached. And, Lord, there's no fan, there's no uh, uh, air conditioning. And, Lord, sometimes we are a little bit spoiled, I think, here in America. But, Lord, we are grateful for what you have given to us. Lord, help us to be appreciative of what we do have. And Lord, I do also pray that you would meet with us. Lord, we, we cannot do anything without your Holy Spirit. So Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would have free rule and reign throughout this place. And Lord, that you would speak to hearts. And Lord, help us to understand uh, the things that are, are talked about here tonight. Lord, the message. And Lord, that you would uh, use your word to speak to each of our hearts. Bless now our time together. Lord, we'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for in advance. In Jesus' precious name we pray and for his sake. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Maybe see them. A servant's heart. A servant's heart. You know, God wants us to have a servant's heart. That's, that's his desire. You know, that's his goal. And a servant, you have to think about it, a servant exists only to serve. It's the, the servant's job, it's to, to serve, it's uh, the servant's duty, it's uh, the, hopefully, the servant's desire as well. And too often, many Christians get the idea that they are here to be served. You know, one of the things I thought about uh, as I was uh, studying this message, uh, and uh, I thought about yesterday with the young people, uh, they, uh, uh, they really had, ser you know, had a servant's heart. They were willing. Boy, I tell you, there were some, uh, I heard some horror stories about some of the cars as they were vacuuming them out. And, uh, uh, you know, it was... Uh, some of them were pretty awful, amen? Uh, but uh, I appreciate their servant's heart. They didn't just give up. They said, hey, uh, we're going to press through and get this done and, and accomplish this and, and make sure it's uh, finished and accomplished. And I, I appreciate that attitude. But our attitude and our heart's desire should be to serve the Lord by serving others. So in the message today, we'll look at uh, who we should be and why we should be in that on a daily basis and how it affects what we do. Number one, it appropriates power. It appropriates power. Notice in our text there, Psalm 119, verse 125, it says, I am 
thy servant. The psalmist here, we're not sure if it's exactly David. I believe it probably was David. But the psalmist here, uh, when he was writing, he, he is talking to someone specific. If you know uh, uh, anything about uh, the psalm, uh, especially Psalm 119, uh, he's talking about the Lord and about his testimonies or his word or, or anything that has to do with his commandments. And so it's talking about the Lord and what the Lord has said. Amen. And so he's talking to this servant, uh, is talking to the Lord. And he says, I am thy servant. He was talking to the Lord. He said, hey, I want you to know that I belong to you. The servant, by the way, doesn't tell the master what to do. The, the servant respects the one, uh, or gives respect to the one that is empowered. You, you don't ever get to the point in your life where you try to tell God what you are and are not going to do. Many years ago, I said, uh, I am not ever going to live in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Don't ever tell God never. Amen? <laughs> I said, I will never be a youth pastor in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I will never be a pastor in Wisconsin. And in Eau Claire, Wisconsin specifically, not only did God make me a youth pastor and a pastor, but he made me both of those right here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. <laughs> God's got a good sense of humor, amen? It's like, oh, Lord, oh, no, amen? Why? I, I, uh, I thought, you know, oh, there's bigger and better things, and, and boy, you know, I, looking back, I am so glad that God brought me here to Birch Street Baptist Church in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and I would have traded for the world. But don't ever get to the point though, where you're trying to tell God what you are, are not going to do. Keep your finger there in Psalm. We'll come back to it here in a moment. Turn with me to Romans chapter number 9. Romans chapter number 9. And notice in Romans chapter number 9, verse number 20 and 21. It says here, Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing form say, uh, say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and, unto a, and another unto dishonor? You know, he says, hey, uh, don't you realize that the potter has a, the ability, the power over that clay to do what he wants with it? How many have ever watched a, uh, a potter uh, working with their hands with the clay? You know, they have many uh, YouTube videos out there. Uh, I would encourage you to just take time to watch them. And, and it is amazing some of the things they can make. I watched this one video, and, and uh, this gentleman had this clay, and, and uh, he began to form uh, one thing, and, and very quickly, I think if I remember correctly, he had a teapot, and he had the lid, he had uh, a couple of different glasses, he had a saucer, and just amazing, all these different things he made, and it was very quick, I was, I was watching, I, I don't think it was more than five minutes long, and he had made all these different things and just laid them out. Why? Because he formed it. He had the power to be able to form that clay into what he wanted it to be. And God wants to do the same thing with us. You know, you'll never have a servant's heart, though, if you're running around trying to tell God what you're going to do or what you're not going to do. Amen. You have to get to the point in your life where you say, Okay, Lord, whatever you want me to do, no matter where it is, where you want me to go, I'll go. Who would have thunk a, uh, uh, a man uh, from New Mexico? Is that where you're from? Yes, sir. New Mexico, that God would call to be a, a missionary in Madagascar, then to call him to pastor, if I remember correctly, in California, then to call him to Thorpe, Wisconsin. Amen. Who would have thought? Amen? <laughs> Amen? But you know what? God can take that pot, uh, that, uh, that clay, I'm sorry, and he can, he can say, hey, I'm going to move you over here and I'm going to mold you this way. Then I'm going to bring you over here, and I'm going to mold you this way. Amen. Now I'm going to bring you over here, and this, I'm going to mold you. Amen. To be the vessel that God wants us to be. Young people, I, I want you to understand, God can use you if you have a servant's heart. Listen, old people, uh, younger people, everybody in between, amen? God can use you if you have a servant's heart. 
If you're just willing to say, Lord, use me no matter what. Lord, uh, use me however you desire to use me. Lord, however you desire to form me, I'm willing to be formed. Why? He has the power to be able to do that. And if you let him, you'll see what will happen. You see, the master, by the way, tells a servant what is required. Turn with me to John chapter number 2. John chapter number 2. In John chapter number 2, I want you to notice in verse number 5 and following. This, of course, was the uh, marriage at uh, Cana of Galilee. And in verse number 5, of course, uh, Mary is talking to the servants. His mother, uh, verse number 5, his mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, what? Do it. Do it. There were set there uh, six uh, water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they didn't fill the water pots with water, right? That's not what the Bible says. Amen. It says there, and they filled them up to the brim. Yes, amen. Amen? Yeah. He said, fill them? Okay. You didn't say how full. We'll just fill them right up. You ever, you ever seen where you get water and, and you get it to the top of the cup and then you just pour it just a little bit more and there's like that little bubble of water and it hasn't poured off to the side yet? You ever done that? It's right. amazing, isn't it? Can you imagine if God said, hey, why don't you fill up your life with what, what I have for you. That's good, amen. Fill it to the top. Amen. How full would you fill it? That's good. How, fill, how full would you allow God to fill your life? Yeah. Amen? You know, some of us say, well, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want it very full. Man, I want it overflowing, amen? amen? I want to be able to sip from the uh, saucer, amen? That's what I want to do. Well, boy, I tell you, sometimes we get in our mind's eye that, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. No, look, my friend, do what God wants you to do. We must obey our master. If you, if you hear you're a child of God, you're his servant. Learn to obey him. Listen to a still, small voice. Oh, number one, we see there, it appropriates power. It appropriates power. Number one, it appropriates power. Number two, it aspires for no position. It aspires for no position. Now, it's back in our text. Notice those four words. I am thy what? Servant. The psalmist doesn't say, look, I'm your best vessel. Amen. Look at how shiny I am. You, know, you could wear a three-piece piece suit and have the worst attitude in the world, and God can't use you. If you have a heart that says, Lord, I'll serve you. Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. You'll be amazed what God can do with you. Amen. He aspired for, for no position. A servant is not trying to get in a, into a position of power. You know, one of the things that my dad, I, I worked under my dad for a number of years, uh, 11 total, well, my dad was one that he always he would always try to talk to me. Hey, son, I want to I want to talk to you about being the youth pastor. I want to talk to you about being the music director. Hey, I want to talk to you about being. And he'd always try to give me a title. You know what I tell him? I don't want the title. Amen. You know why? Because with the title comes responsibility. <laughs> and I said, I can just dump all the responsibility on you. I'll do the work. I don't care. Somebody else can get the glory. Amen? You and I ought to have the attitude and say, Lord, I'll just serve you no matter if you use me, I'll serve you. Amen. It's good. By the way, did you know God can still use you? Amen. He said, Oh, Pastor, you don't know my life. You don't know the things that I've done. You don't yeah, know my, my life's a mess. Do this for me. Take these three fingers. Right alongside your neck here is an artery. Comes up from your heart. And it's pumping blood. And you should be able to feel that pump, 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 pump. You know what that means? That means you're still alive. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
Wives, your husband has a heart. Amen? <laughs> you may not think so, but he has a heart. All right? It's pumping blood. Amen? You're still alive. God can still use you if you're willing to be used of him. God still can use you if you just say, hey, I want to be your servant. I want nothing else just to be your servant. Even David said, hey, if I could just be a doorman, that's all I want to be. Just a doorman in, in, the, in my father's house. What about you? You know, so many times we think, well, if I could just get into this position, then I'll do better. If I could just have this title, then I'll serve God. No. If you're not serving Him now, you won't serve Him once you get the title. That's right. A servant aspires only to please the Master. What are you doing to please the Lord? Look with me if you want Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10. The problem with a lot of folks is they'll say, well, I want to please the Lord, but I want to do my own thing first. Yeah. Mark chapter number 10, picking up in verse number 35. It says here, James and John, uh, the sons of Zebedee, Mark chapter number 10, verse 35. The sons of Zebedee uh, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us, and we may sit one on the right hand and the other on thy left in thy glory. Jesus said unto them, You know not what ye ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not my to give. And it shall be given to them that uh, for whom it is prepared. And then the ten heard it. They began to be much displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, You know that they which are counted to rule the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And their great ones exercise authority upon them, but so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. No, we need to realize that God wants us to follow His example. It's sad that sometimes people think, well, you know, if I can just get this position, then, you know, and that's, that's what James and John, they were, they were uh, saying, oh, you know, thank you, Lord. Hey, we want to be able to be in this position. You know, we, we, we are, are with you, and, and we've gone with you and done things and, and saw things, and, and we want to be able to be recognized. You know, think about a servant as many times they're not recognized. Yeah. They don't do it for recognition. They do it to please their master. Yeah. Amen. I think of the account in Matthew chapter number uh, 17 when, when uh, there's the Mount of Transfiguration and, and uh, you know, they're, they're all excited and said, hey, let's build a, uh, uh, you know, let's build a temple, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Remember that? They're excited about it. But then there's some arguing and things that go on. And I want you to notice, <coughs> excuse me, pick it up in Matthew chapter number 18. Matthew chapter number 18. I want you to notice what happens here in verse number, uh, uh, verse number 1. Matthew chapter number 18, verse number 1. It says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Hey! Hey, which one of us are greatest? Lord, you, come on, you can tell us. I mean, we can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus called the little child unto him, sat him in the midst of them, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever there shall humble, and whosoever therefore shall hum, humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord said, hey, 
You've got to be able to willing to humble yourself. Be willing to not get all the glory. You know, that's what, what happens is sometimes we think, well, if I could just get the glory, then, then, the, well, then I'll be good. The disciples thought that it was all about being in position. They forgot that it was all about performing for and pleasing the Father. You know, when we get that concept and understand what serving the Lord is all about, that's when the Lord can really use us. Oh, it aspires for no position. Number one, it appropriates power. Number two, it aspires for no position. And lastly, number three, it achieves the master's plan. It achieves the master's plan. Notice back in our text there, Psalm 119, verse 125. Of those four words, notice the last two. He says, thy servant. Thy servant. You know, one of the things that we had to do here at Birch Street Baptist Church many years ago, we had to submit what's called a master plan. The master plan includes future buildings and parking lots and things like that. We had to submit it to the state and, and said, okay, this is what our plan is, this is what our desire is, and this is what we're trying to accomplish. The master plan kind of gives you a guideline or a direction of where you're going to go, amen, what you're going to do with your property. That's what we had to submit here at Birch Street Baptist Church. And then that master plan, of course, it had building number one, building number two, building number three, and building number four. Had the future parking. I, I remember uh, we have the master plans here at the church, and, and uh, there's parts of it where it says uh, this is future parking and future parking and, and uh, you know, all those different areas. Why? That's the future plan. Amen. Amen. Notice with me, if you will, John chapter number 4. John chapter number 4. And picking up in verse number 34 here. John chapter number 4 and verse number 34. It says, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that repented, uh, I'm sorry, reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And here it is that same true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men, excuse me, labor, and ye are entered into their labors. Amen. You see, the master plan was that God said, hey, there's going to be some things that you're, you're going to labor in and, and you're, not going to, you're not going to see the, uh, the reaping of that. And, and then there'll be others that uh, will, you'll come into the midst of that, that uh, uh, planting time and that harvest time. And other people have already labored and they've uh, labored hard before you. And you come along and just pick, uh, pick that, uh, uh, that soul up, you know, and you think, boy, that was easy. No, you didn't see the labors of folks that were praying for that soul. You didn't see the, the labor of those that uh, planted the seed. And you didn't see the labor of those that watered. But you came along and you were able to harvest. You know, my dad, I remember him telling me a, a story about uh, when he was in Bible college, there was a, a, a professor that said, gentlemen, you're going to be laboring in other men's labors, in other men's fields. And you're not going to realize the, the, uh, the things that they have done before you to make, make it easier for you. That's right. That's right. You know, I realize that there have been a lot of people that have sowed the seed of the gospel. Amen. A lot of people that have watered. A lot of people that have labored and, and prayed. You know, uh, uh, there are many times things that go on behind the scenes, by the way. I appreciate the McCoys. Amen. I really do. I, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, puff their heads up or anything here tonight or toot their own horn, but I, I tell you, I really appreciate them. You know, they do things that you will never, ever see, them, uh, and they'll never complain about it. Amen. You know, by the way, I would encourage you to sign up for uh, cleaning uh, the church. You say, what's the matter? Because almost every single week, it's the McCoy family come over here, labor every week, week in, week out, clean the building. You didn't know that. Many of you, uh, you know, some of you may have known about it, but many of you didn't. You know they, they don't do it they, they don't do it for the glory 
They don't do it for the pat on the back. Amen. They don't do it for recognition. They do it to please our Heavenly Father. Amen. They want, they want God's house to look, uh, look nice, look pristine. Amen. But you know, here in our text there, in John chapter number 4, Jesus is setting an example. He said, hey, I'm here to do the work of Him that sent me. I'm here to finish His work. Jesus set that example to have a servant's heart and, and achieve what the Master had planned. You think about it. The woman at the well there in John chapter number 4, it, just, it wasn't by happenstance that He happened by that well and, and just happened to you know, stop by and, and, well, can I drink some water? God had a plan for Him to be there. He must needs go through Samaria. Amen? Amen. Why? Because there was a woman there at the well that needed to hear about Jesus Christ. And as a result of her and her testimony, there were many people in that city that got saved. What if your testimony would result in other people getting saved? What if you were to witness to that one person and that one person ended up with seeing a thousand people get saved? You know, everything that Christ did was done with the end goal in mind. He was always following the Father's plan. We know what our Master's plan is, but are we willing to follow it? Are we willing to follow it? You see our servant's heart. How's your heart today? Do you have a servant's heart? Are you willing to do your Master's bidding? You see, if we would recognize who we are, if we would realize our position in life, then we too can participate in the Master's plan. You can have a servant's heart that God can really use. Do you have a servant's heart today? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I'm going to ask a couple of questions here tonight. We'll have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk to the Lord. Come and do business with Him. If you're here today, you say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. I'm not 100% sure if heaven's my eternal home. But I'd like to be sure. I'd like to get it settled. Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you. And thank you. I see those hands. Anybody else? I see that one in this one over here. Anybody else? Pastor, thank you. Make something down. Pastor, I'm not sure if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? Is there anyone else like that here today? The other question is this. Say, Pastor, I know I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. But I've got to be honest, I haven't really had a servant's heart like I probably should. And trying to realize and doing things in my own power and to realize that I need to do it in the Master's power. I've been trying to aspire for position and I realize God just wants me to have a servant's heart just not really trying to get a position but just wanting to serve Him. I realize that I need to do some things to achieve the Master's plan. God spoke in my heart about that here tonight. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you. Thank you. There are hands all over this auditorium here tonight. Thank you. Make something about Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. I didn't raise my hand. Yes, I see that one back there. Anybody else? I didn't raise my hand a moment ago. Would you pray for me? Is there anyone else like that here today? Yes, thank you. I see that one. Anybody else? Thank you. Make something about Yes, I see this one as well. I see that one as well. Anybody else? Thank you. Make something about In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk to the Lord. Come and do business with Him. Maybe it's time to just say, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll serve where you want me to serve. Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless this invitation time, Lord. I pray that you be glorified for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.